Yesterday we learned about a method called the quadratic formula, and that method enabled us to solve an equation like this for x. So right here you can see if we were to do it through the quadratic formula, okay, plugging in our a, b, and c, um, once you simplify everything, in the end we wind up with 6 plus and minus radical 7. What we're going to talk about here is another way to solve the same exact equation, and it's called completing the square. Now, in order to do this, the first thing you want to do is you want to take whatever constant, whatever number you have on the same side of the equation with the x's, and you want to move it to the other side of the equation. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract 29 from both sides of the equation. Okay, now when you do that, you can bring down the x squared you could bring down the minus 12x, and we're going to leave a space. I like to just put a box to remind me I have to put something there. And you could bring down your equal sign and the negative 29, and we're going to put an empty box on this side as well. Now what we want to do is we want to put a number in this box. And in order to determine what number to put in this box, look at the term before it. You're going to look at the number in front of the x, and what we're going to do is we're going to take half of that number and then square it. So if we take half of negative 12, that gives us negative 6, and negative 6 squared is positive 36. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to add 36 to the left-hand side of the equation. But if we're going to add it to the left-hand side of the equation, in order to keep our equation balanced, we have to also add it to the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so then on the left-hand side of the equation, what you'll see is we have a trinomial here. And this trinomial, what we want to do is we want to factor it. And you're always going to wind up with a repetitive factor. If you factor this, two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to negative 12 is negative 6 and negative 6. So we have x minus 6 times x minus 6, which underneath I'm just going to rewrite that as x minus 6 squared. Whenever you do completing the square, whenever you take half of a number and then square it, you'll always wind up with a trinomial that gives you a repetitive factor like this. Okay, so now on the other side of the equation, just combine your like terms. Negative 29 plus 36 is positive 7, so let's bring down a 7. All right, now what we want to do is we want to take this equation and we want to solve it for x. So in order to get rid of a square, we're just going to take the square root of both sides, and on the left side, a square and a square root cancel each other out, leaving us with x minus 6. Now, on the right-hand side, remember, when you're taking the square root of something, Okay, when you're solving for x, this exponent of a 2 tells you that there's going to be two answers. So on the right-hand side, we're not just going to have radical 7. We're going to have a positive radical 7 and a negative radical 7. Okay, and then to get x by itself, we would just add 6 to both sides of the equation. And that leaves us with x equals, you can put your 6 first, and then your plus and minus, and then your radical 7. So we get 6 plus and minus radical 7 which as you can see is exactly what we got when we got the when we did the quadratic formula so completing the square is just another method of solving a quadratic equation okay now in number two you'll notice two things are different first of all the number is already on the right hand side of the equation for us so we don't have to move that but the second thing is now we have a number other than one in front of our x squared and when that happens we need to divide our entire equation by whatever that number is you always want to get it so your coefficient in front of the x squared is a 1. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So when I do that, 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. 18x divided by 3 is 6x. And I'm going to just put my box right now because I know I'm going to have to fill that in. And then 27 divided by 3 is 9. And again, I'm going to put a box over here. Okay, so just to remind you, in order to find the number that goes inside our box, we look at the term before it, and we're going to take half of this number and then square it. So half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Okay, so again, you're taking half of that number and squaring it. So we're adding 9 to both sides. Now we're going to factor this, and two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6 are 3 and 3. So we're going to have x plus 3 and x plus 3. And remember, when you go to factor this, if your factors are not the same, it means you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, and then we know we can rewrite x plus 3 times x plus 3 as x plus 3 squared. 
Now on the right hand side of the equation, 9 plus 9 is 18, so let's bring that down. Okay, so to get rid of the square, we're going to take the square root. So that leaves us with x plus 3 equals, and keep in mind, remember, because this is a squared, it means there's two values that will make this equation true. So we're gonna, it'll be the positive and the negative value of radical 18. Okay, now, in order to get x by itself, uh, we are going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that's going to leave us with x equals negative 3 plus and minus radical 18. Now, radical 18, that simplifies. So if you can simplify it, you're going to want to do that. So you can break a radical 18 up into radical 9, radical 2. And since the square root of 9 is 3, this is going to become 3 radical 2. So let's just bring down our x equals negative 3 plus and minus, and this is going to be our final answer. Okay, number 3 is the last one we're going to take a look at. Now, if you notice here, not only do we again have a number other than 1 in front of the x squared, so we're going to have to divide everything by 2, but also we're going to have to rearrange this equation a little bit. Okay, so let's rearrange first. Let's just get that out of the way. So I'm going to leave my 2x squared where it is, but this negative 10x, I want to move over to the left-hand side of the equation. I want all my x's together. So when I move a negative 10x to the left, it's going to become a positive 10x. Okay, and then also, this 12, I'm going to want to bring over to the right-hand side of the equation. When I do, that's going to become a negative 12. Okay, now, to get it so we have 1x squared, let's divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2x squared divided by 2 is just x squared, and 10x divided by 2 is 5x. So let's put our empty box. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. And let's put our empty box as well. Now, this one, although I don't know if you could tell at this point, this one's going to be a little bit trickier to find the number that goes in the box, because whenever you have an odd number here, you're going to wind up with a fraction. So here's why. We want to take half of 5. So let me do that off the side here. I'm going to, over here, take half of 5. So half of 5 is 5 halves. Now, if you take 5 halves and square it, what you do is you square the numerator and you square the denominator. So when you square the 5, it's going to be 25. And when you square the 2, it's going to be 4. So it's going to be 25 fourths. So I'm going to add, let's see if I can fit this in here, 25 fourths to both sides of the equation. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. And you may saying, be saying to yourself, how am I going to factor that? How am I going to come up with two numbers that multiply to this fraction and add to 5? Well, it's actually not that bad because if you take a look at number 2, when you go to factor this, whatever number is right here, okay, in front of your x on the trinomial, the two numbers within your parentheses are just half of this, right? Isn't 3 half of 6? So once you set up your parentheses, if you want to determine what two numbers multiply to 25 fourths and add to 5, it's just half of 5, which is 5 halves. So we're going to put a 5 halves here and here. And, and that's pretty sloppy, but those do say 5 halves. So when we go to rewrite that, we can rewrite that as x plus 5 halves squared. Okay, and then on the right-hand side of the equation, you're just going to take negative 6 and add on 25 fourths. I mean, technically you could do that in your calculator, but I'm just going to do it by hand right here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the negative 6 over 1, and I'm multiplying that fraction by 4 over 4. That way we have a common denominator here. So this is really negative 24 over 4 plus 25 over 4. So since negative 24 plus 25 is positive 1, we wind up with positive 1 fourth. And from here, we're just going to finish out the problem like we did all the rest. To get rid of the square, we take the square root. So it leaves us with x plus 5 halves equals positive and negative radical 1 fourth. Now, radical 1 fourth, if you want to take the square root of this, the numerator and the denominators are both perfect squares. So you could really just take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. 
So this is really positive and negative, one half. I'm just going to bring down this side of the equation. And then to get the x by itself, just subtract 5 halves from both sides. So that leaves us with x equals negative 5 halves plus and minus 1 half. Okay, now, since we don't have any radicals in our answer, since really this is just a number and this is just a number, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add the 1 half to the negative 5 halves, and we're going to want to subtract the 1 half from the negative 5 halves. Okay, so we really have negative 5 halves plus 1 half. Let me just write x equals in front of that. And we also have x equals negative 5 halves minus 1 half. Okay, so let's start with this one. Negative 5 halves plus 1 half. Combine the tops, keep the bottoms. Okay, so when we add the numbers in the numerator, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So one of our values we get is x equals negative 2. Down here, if we take negative 5 halves and subtract 1 half, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So these are our two answers.